Hello everyone, Mrs. Wallace here to do another chapter one read aloud. Today we are going to be reading the first chapter of the book Bloom by Kenneth Opal. Kenneth Opal has written a number of great science fiction books. This one is the first book of a trilogy. The trilogy is called The Overthrow, so this is book one. All three books are out, so if you are into science fiction, if you are into adventure, you will definitely love The Overthrow series. So this is the first book, Bloom. The invasion begins, but not, not as you'd expect. It begins with rain. Rain that carries seeds. Seeds that sprout overnight everywhere. These new plants take over crop fields, twine up houses, and burrow below streets. They bloom and release toxic pollens. They bloom and form Venus flytrap-like pods that swallow animals and people. They bloom everywhere, unstoppable. Where are they? Three kids on a remote island seem immune to the toxic plants. Anaya, P Petra, Seth. They all have strange allergies, and yet not to these plants. What's their secret? Can they somehow be the key to beating back this invasion? They better figure it out fast because it's starting to rain again. So to give you an idea of each chapter is told from a different person's point of view. So this very first chapter I'm going to read you is from Anaya's point of view. Anaya woke up blind. With a sigh, she touched her fingertips to her eyelids, glued shut. She sat up in bed and sneezed seven times in a row. The inside of her nose was granular with dried snot. She stood and expertly felt her way to the bathroom. She found the sack of washcloths by the sink and turned on the hot water. The first few times she'd woken up like this, she'd freaked out. But now she was used to it, especially at the height of spring allergy season. Patiently, she held the moist, warm cloth against her eyelid in turn, melting away the gunk. She slowly pried her eyes open and stared blearily into the mirror. Where have you been all my life? You thing of beauty, she said to her reflection. Her face was puffy, and around her eyes, normally she thought her eyes were one of her best features, but right now they looked piggy. The end of her nose was chafed and flaky from blowing it all the time. To jazz things up just a little more, a new bouquet of pimples had blossomed across her skin. The fading echo of a headache pulsed in her skull and reminded her of last night's dream. It was one she'd had many times. She'd been running really fast, and it was exhilarating, even if it did always seem to leave her with a headache. She opened the crammed medicine cabinet, special cleansers and ointments for her acne, extra puffers for asthma, plastic vials of monster pills for her allergies. She slugged back, too. This was definitely a two-pill day. Anaya started to wash her face, then stopped. What was she doing? She wanted to look as rough as possible. She should have left at least one eye glued shut. She dragged herself down to the kitchen, trying to shamble like a hunchback with her nose plugged up. It was pretty hard to smell anything, but she could definitely smell the toast. She imagined a piece of thin, crisp bread with just a swipe of butter and some marmalade soaking into the glistening surface. She loved toast before she became allergic to practically half the food on earth. Mom was already in her uniform, loading her breakfast things into the dishwasher. I can't go to school, Anaya said. Her mom turns, sweetie, can you please just call the school? We let you skip two days last week. Technically, you're not even sick. Anaya pointed to her face. If I walked into a hospital, they'd have me in the ICU in two seconds. Mom laughed softly, then came close and brushed Anaya's long, wavy hair away from her face. You're lovely. My skin's volcanic. They don't see your acne. They see you. Only if they have x-ray vision. Mom had no idea. She'd always been beautiful, and she was still the most glamorous mom Anaya had ever seen. Just look at her. Tall, slim, raven hair spilling over the crisp collar of her white shirt with her epaulets, four stripes, and only the only female captain flying for island air. Lila Dara, even her name was so pretty. When she put on her sunglasses and bomber jacket, she made a pilot's uniform look like Paris fashion. Meanwhile, Anaya was shorter. She definitely had dad's sturdier body type. She didn't mind that. What she minded was her acne and not being able to make it through the class without having an asthma attack and feeling generally feeble. Are you using the acne cream? Mom asked. At night? You're supposed to do it during the day, too. Oh, it smells so bad. The doctor said it was important. So I can be hideous and gross smelling? You are neither, her mom said and gave her a hug. If I stay home, can I work more on my, I can work more on my history project? Your marks couldn't get any higher, Anaya. Anaya gave a pitiful cough and wheezed. 
there's Jim today, she said, giving it one last kick at the can. For Jim, I will write you a note, Mom agreed. Anaya sighed in defeat. Mom was letting her off school today. Dad, on the other hand, might. I've got to go. There's there's Mom Dalachila warming in the oven, Mom said. Tell Dad not to forget the chutney. Thanks. Anaya knew that Mom herself preferred scrambled eggs and toast for breakfast, but Anaya often felt often made the lentil pancakes folded over with paneer inside. Lentils were so safe. And even though she was lactose intolerant, for some unknown reason, paneer was one of those few cheeses she could handle. Also, the pancakes were delicious. Mom adjusted the knot of her black tie. I'll be back for dinner. Anywhere good today? Mom flew float planes, usually de Havian beavers. Most of the runs were between Victoria and Vancouver, but there were also plenty of charters between the Gulf Islands and even further north. I'm bringing back a group that was sport fishing off sonar. I'll probably come home smelling like salmon. She hastily wrote a note on the pad on the phone and hand, pad by the phone and handed it to Anaya. It gets better, she said, kissing her on the forehead. See you, sweetie. She wanted to believe her mother. She wanted to believe that one day she'd bloom. She'd imagined a dull flower suddenly opening its petal and they were dazzling and everyone would look up from their phones and whip out their earbuds and gasp and say, oh, where did that come from? And I've never seen anything so beautiful. She smiled at the fantasy and grabbed an apple from the fruit bowl. Cutting it in half, she popped it into the microwave for 45 seconds. If she ate it raw, she got bumps all over her lips and really itchy tongue. Basically, she was allergic to everything. Gluten, eggs, milk. She was allergic to smoke and dust. There were entire months she was allergic to. April was tree pollen and May too. June was grass. July was still grass, but also mold spores. And then August and September were ragweed. It hadn't always been like this, just the last couple of years. Now her picture was plastered all over the staff room like a wanted poster, alerting teachers of her food allergies and telling them where EpiPens were. Anaya carried one with her everywhere. She spooned some honey into her mouth. Someone had told her that local raw honey was a good way of curing allergies because it exposed you slowly to all the pollens in your area. She put the kettle on for her green tea, but because someone else had told her it was the healthiest, healthiest thing in the world for you when you lived on Salt Spring Island. People were always telling you the best things to eat and drink, things to make you wise and healthy and live forever. Dad came into the kitchen, bringing with him the smell of soil. No matter how often he showered, he still smelled like leaf mold and pine needles and had a line of dirt under his fingernails. He wore the same green merino wool sweater pretty much every day, and even though it faded at the elbows, he mostly slept, kept his beard tidy, but sometimes it started creeping out of control like the unruly plants he studied. Dad was a botanist with the Ministry of Agriculture and worked at the island's experimental farm. When she was younger, Anaya thought of experimental farm was a lot weirder and cooler than it turned out to be. She imagined giant cows and chickens the size of velociraptors. But in reality, it was a bunch of greenhouses and scraggly plots with boring-looking plants. Her, his specialty was grasses, which her friends thought was hilarious. Hey, Anaya, can your dad score us some grass? I hear he grows the best weed. Really, his specialty was figuring out what ways to stop things growing, like invasive species that should have been here but were, shouldn't have been here but were, and were making life miserable for other plants. How are you, Dad asked. I was thinking maybe I should live in a bubble, Anaya said. A bubble, Dad said, opening the oven and peering in at the pancakes. Are these all for me? No, I'd like to. You know, like a giant hamster ball. They're called blorbs or something, except mine would filter out allergens. Dad set the plate of mong dal chiel on the middle of the breakfast table and sat down. So you just roll around in it? Pretty much, Anaya said, hoping, helping herself to the lentil pancakes. I could roll to school. That hill is mighty tricky, said Dad. I'd have to get up some speed. Anyway, they could clear space at the back of the classroom, and I just kind of wobble around. They could pass you they could pass you Anaya friendly snacks of the airlock. And I couldn't help grinning. And maybe one day I'd meet a boy just like me and we'd get a bigger bubble and raise a family of bubble babies. Tad nodded thoughtfully. I think this is a very good idea. Can you please call the school and tell them I'm sick? No, Dad said sympathetically. But I'll give you a lift. All right, so that was a quick preview of the book Bloom. Hopefully you pick it up when you come to the library next, and I'll see you next time.